Praise God. Amen. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. I will enter his courts with praise. Amen. His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Thank God. How many are glad tonight? Joyful because of earthly situations, 
But friend, when you come into his presence, Amen. you can't help but be happy. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, he wrote your name in a book of life if you've been born again. Throw your sins into a sea of forgetfulness. Those are not just cliches. That's the word. Praise God. Amen. He sealed us with his Holy Spirit of promise. Giving us the earnest, the down payment, the deposit of our inheritance. Praise God. Amen. And I'm glad he lets us feel it. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. I love those goosebumps. Amen. Praise God. Sing unto the king who is coming to reign. Sing unto the king.
think what heaven's going to be like? Ah, mama. Like a sound of many waters and a sound of thunder. Can you imagine the millions of people just lifting their voice up? My God, just to see him sitting upon that throne. Thank God he's going to let us forget about this world. I'm, I'm glad I'm going to forget something. How about you? Oh, yes. No more sorrow. No more suffering. No more tears. We can't really wrap our mind about, around that. But we can wrap around the fact that the Bible says that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and our minds can't perceive what our Father has prepared for us. It will be well worth going through what we're going through in order to get there. Come on. Come on. Because nothing can be compared to it. Non believers live in the now. Non believers live in what they have. And their counterfeit uh, happiness. But we've got something today that's real. That's right. Amen. Sister Pat shared with me before service uh, Thursday night, I think it was, we took a prayer request, and uh, some folks had some unspoken uh, prayer request. And she came to me before service, says, Remember, we, we prayed about unspoken prayer requests. I said, Yeah. She says, well, I got a phone call and the Lord answered that one, that unspoken prayer request at one o'clock in the morning. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, that might not be no big deal to you, but it's a big deal to them. How many have ever had an unspoken prayer request and the Lord answered that unspoken prayer request? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We don't have to, when we take prayer requests, we don't have to give all the details and all the dot all our I's and cross our T's and... Just say, hey, so and so needs a needs prayer for their body or an open whatever, you know, but praise God. The splendor of the king, clothed in majesty, the next song says. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. Do you realize? I believe it's Psalms 139 that David said that even darkness is light to him. And darkness trembles at his voice. Praise God. How great is our God. The splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty. And all the earth rejoice. Yes. Yes. Thank you, my God. Oh, would 
just make us feel like we're nothing. I said it's kind of like the parent that brings up their child, always condemning their child, always saying to their child they'll never amount to anything mm. and uh, they'll never accomplish anything. Mm. That child grows up as an adult uh, feeling like they can never accomplish anything and that they'll never add up to anything. But uh, the devil's a liar for you. Yes, he, yes. yep. he really is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. That's right. The issues that you're facing today are nothing that Jesus cannot take care of. Yes, sir. And uh, we have a choice as people of God, especially in the times that we're living in, to believe the lie that everybody else is believing yeah. or to stand upon His Word that's forever settled in heaven. Allow His Spirit and His presence to give us grace. Truly casting our cares upon Him. That's another thing the devil does. Makes us feel like because something's happening in our life that God's oblivious to what's taking place. He knew you when you were in your mother's womb. He knew you when you were an embryo. Before you were even formed, He knew you. And He planned out your life. To the way he wanted it to be. Think of how long it took you to get there. Think of how long it took you to, for however, whatever age you were when you finally stepped into the will of God. How many know what I'm talking about? Amen. And he has promised that he's going to finish the work, Philippians 1 and 6, that he started in us. Praise God. And if we sin, we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us cleanse us from unrighteousness and we move on yep. and when the devil throws it in your face say it's under the blood you move on yes, it is. praise God you move on from failure yep. you move on from those skirmishes that seemingly you lose you get back up and say if God be for us who can be against us why don't we sing that song praise God. amen stand with me if you would I just feel such a Holy Ghost, it's in this place. God wants you to be encouraged today. Amen. He's on your side. Hallelujah. For us, who can be against us? Who can separate us from His
son fell. Scripture says he came into himself smelling those stinky pigs. All kinds of slop all over him. He probably stunk to high heaven. And even in that kind of environment he came to himself. And he starts heading home. Doesn't say if he took a shower or what happened but he can almost almost I'm sure, I, I don't know about you, but I can, I can actually think the way he was thinking. The guilt, the shame. What's dad going to do? What, what can I possibly say to him? I remember standing before him and saying, give me my inheritance. It's mine. I want it. And I can remember everything I did to get me to this place. But the Bible says every day his daddy went out and looked down the road. And waited for him to come. Because he believed that the day would come when he would come home. But he had it all planned out. He probably uh, memorized what he was going to say. And he stood before his father. And he said, man, I, I'm not worthy to, to be your son. Just, just, just make me one of your hired her servants. And what did daddy do? Probably said, what are you, nuts? And his father already had it planned out. Because... The other servants had the robe. The other servants had a nice pair of shoes for him. And he turns around and he takes this robe and he puts this robe on him and puts shoes on his feet. And then he does something that probably blew everybody away. Because see, in our minds, it's like, well, he got what he deserved. How dare him? He left us here and he took all his inheritance and he spent it on riotous living and who's he think he is coming back here? That's probably what his brother felt, but nevertheless. But daddy took off his signet ring, his ring of authority. And he said, give me your hand, son. And he, he slid that ring on his son's finger, signifying that you have my authority you have my power. Everything I own belongs to you. I can only imagine the, the relief, or the, even the shock. And think of how many times you and I come into this house. Or even in your own prayer time. And you enter into his gates and his courts thinking like you're a secondary citizen or... Someone down here somewhere is because the devil's lied to you all week and said, you, oh, you got angry, oh, you did this, or this happened here, or this happened there. And your heavenly father comes alongside of you and puts his arm around you and says, oh, man, it's so good to see you here with me. You say, I don't know about that. Well, if you don't know about that, why does the scripture say, say, say that he inhabits the praises of his people? Aren't we made in his image and in his likeness? Do you, do you like somebody to say, hey, I appreciate you? Oh, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Brother Bobby, the people that work for you, you ever say, hey, man, I appreciate you. I, I thank you so much for you're doing a great job. I tell you what, that boosts. That go, wow, the boss, mm -hmm. did you hear what he said to me? It's just, it's, God inhabits our praises and because he enjoys it when we show him appreciation. True. Reason why we have what we have right. here this afternoon is because we're his children. If you're baptized in Jesus' name and sealed with his spirit, received the Holy Ghost, and your name is in the book of life, you're one of his kids. So he waits for you and I to get here collectively and begin to just lift him up and exalt him and, and thank him. And, and, and he gets excited about that. I wonder if God gets goosebumps like we do sometimes. I don't know. It doesn't say it in the Word. However, I'm convinced that he's thrilled. When we come in here, in here, not only expressing our appreciation to him, but believing what he said to us. You have my authority. 
I give you power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. I even promise you, you're going to do greater works than I did when I was on the earth. And now that I'm upon the throne in heaven and you're my body on the earth, I want to flow through you and do exactly and then some what I did when I was on the earth. And so, okay, we have a hard time wrapping our mind around that. But that's exactly the truth. Yes, it is. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. He is such an awesome God. He loves us more than we can ever imagine. He has a plan for us. And if, if there's one teeny bit of you that hasn't fully surrendered your life to him, I encourage you. Get everything you can. Praise God. If you think you've arrived and you're at, at a place where he can't do anything else in your life or uh, you've kind of, you're at a level where man, I, I know Jesus, I'm, I'm all set. Shame on you. I know he's not done with me and I know he's not done with you. Praise God. But hear me this afternoon. He will never ever bypass your free will. You will never ever by, bypass your your strong will, your, your thinking that I don't need anymore. And I know we say, well, you know, I'm all set. I got this. I got that. But a lot of times, a lot of times, our very actions speak differently to them. Amen. Even Jesus himself had to say, man, I wish this would kind of pass by my way. But nevertheless... Not my will, but yours be done. I don't agree with what you're telling me to do, Jesus. And I don't know if what I'm feeling here, there's something that uh, you want me to do. What? You want me to go where? You want me to go talk to who? But that's how we test you. To see how much you truly are a son or a daughter of God. And uh, what, what's about to take place? <sighs> hmm. The culmination of things that you and I have heard for many, many years over and over and over and over again. And God is shifting gears and he's asking us to be a part of what he's going to do. I made up my mind. I want to be involved. I want to be part of what he's what he wants to do. Jesus. Don't know how it's going to happen. Don't know, really. I don't think about tomorrow. I just function in the today in his presence and seek his will. But uh, as the old saying goes, you ain't seen nothing yet. Yep. Praise God. Thank you, Praise God. Let's talk to him a little bit. Praise God. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Oh, thank you for the spirit. In your name, Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let him look into your heart. Let him look into your mind here today. Let his spirit penetrate your being. What are you concerned about? What are you looking for? Did you just come here to have church or fill a time of obligation? Go ahead, ask anything in his name. He said he'd give it to you. What do you need? What are you looking for? In Jesus' name. He's here. He's listening. He walks amongst us. Oh, yes. You can be encumbered about the things of this world. Or you can find yourself in his presence. Seeking that needful thing. Might be more grace. Might be forgiveness. Might be to give your worries to him. That obstacle that's in your way. That cropped up this, this week. Why don't you give it to him. Tell him. You take this Jesus. You handle this Father. I receive your peace in Jesus name my God. Because this is what your word tells me to do. I cast my cares upon you. My worries. My concerns. I give it all to you, Jesus, and I receive your peace right now in Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name, Lord of Israel. You stand on your word today. We believe your word today. In the name of Jesus Christ. We cover today, Sister Tiffany, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we cover her in prayer. We cover her in authority. We cover her, my God of heaven, and pray. And loose, Lord Jesus, the undergirding of the Holy Ghost. You were wounded. You were bruised. The chastisement of our peace is upon your shoulders, my God. You promised in your word that by your stripes we're healed. I loose your spirit to overshadow her right now. I loose your spirit to undergird her right now. I speak to her body, Lord Jesus. I command healing virtue to touch her, my God. According to her faith, Lord Jesus, let it be unto her. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we stand on your word. We stand on your promise. God of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Claim the promise of God. Claim the promise of God for your life. Claim the promise of God. You need to leave this house differently than when you came in. Claim the promise of God right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. He'll break every chain. He'll break every chain. Every hindrance. I loose the spirit of faith in this house right now in Jesus' name. We stand on your word, my God. We stand on your word, my God. We stand on your word. Have your way. Have your way, Jesus. In your mighty name, Father. Thank you, Jesus. As we yield ourselves to you, as we surrender ourselves to you, Jesus. Oh, you know our frame. You know we are but dust, my God of heaven. We thank you, Lord, that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. We thank you for grace. We thank you for grace, Jesus. We thank you for your power and your ability in our lives. We don't want to do it, my God. It's you that does it. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Praise God, praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus. Come on, let the Holy Ghost flow through. In Jesus' name. He that believeth in me as the scripture has said, out of his belly would flow rivers of living water. Tap into it today. Because there's a mighty river that is flowing in this house. Jesus, yes. Jesus, yes. Jesus, yes. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Learn of me here today. In Jesus' name. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Yes, 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 Jesus, yes. Yes, my God, we believe it. We stand on it, Lord. Maybe you're here today and all you can say is, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Help thou my unbelief, Jesus. Help thou my unbelief, Jesus. Oh, yes, 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 my God of heaven. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name, my God of heaven. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sri Katara Mosatati. Wonderful Savior. Oh, Lord, I Tara Mosati. Jesus, yes. Jesus, Jesus, yes. Jesus, yes. Every time we come, every time we're in His presence, He wants to minister to us. He wants to touch us. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Sometimes you're not hungry when it's meal time. 
Sometimes you ate too much back there, and when it's time to eat, you know, I'm not really that hungry. Oh, just give me a couple of rice cakes, and I'll be satisfied. He wants to give you more than rice cakes in this place today. My God, my God, his table is set. If you leave this house still hungry, it's nobody's fault but yours. In Jesus' name, Father, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Brother Bobby, would you pray over the offering this afternoon in Jesus' name? Good Lord, we're thankful today, Lord, for your spirit we feel. Thank you for your wonderful presence, God. We're thankful for all that's here today, Lord Jesus. We ask for your blessing. Oh, yes. Upon the remainder yes, of this service, Father, yes, that the Father. anointing of the Holy Ghost will continue to flow to each and every one of us, Lord. That precious anointing that destroys every yoke, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We ask that you would, Lord, bless this offering, that you would multiply it and increase it for your kingdom, Jesus, Lord, and for amen. your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come if you would this afternoon. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. In the name of Jesus, Amen. oh yes, there is power. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, I know, I know. break every chain, yes. break every yes. chain, Jesus. break every chain. Jesus, uh -huh. Jesus. Uh -huh. church service it's not going to be where we gather and uh, whisper our prayers and kind of do like we do a lot of times where we pray to ourselves. I, I've yet to see somebody go into battle silently it's going to be intense if you've never engaged in spiritual warfare uh, again you want to ask the Lord do you want me to participate in this? 
because you don't want to participate in it if you've never uh, or don't know anything about it. Part of it is just going to be praying. There are going to be people all over the world, all over the world. I don't, I forget how many nations around the world are participating in this. But I've been, my first call to war meeting was in 2014. And uh, it's nothing compared to what this one's going to be, be like. Because the Lord has uh, brought us uh, for the past few months. 24-hour uh, prayer chains have been activated around the world, all over the world. Fastings have been activated. Some of us have warred already. Uh, but this is it. This is, we're coming against the gates of hell. And we're believing that God is going to finally break those gates so that they'll be open. And that people, the people that we don't even expect are going to come into the kingdom when he starts to pour his spirit out culmination of the church age we're, we're there this is it this is the whole this is the whole reason why we do what we do live the way we live believe what we believe this is it so if you want to come uh, brother Olson said he'd be here between five and eight uh, he gets up quite early to, to go to work so uh, he says I can uh, stay that stay till then and then uh, I gotta go home and go to bed I said yeah you do what you gotta do and, and I don't know if I'm gonna be here all night long till 10 but if you want to come for an hour come for an hour you want to come for two hours three hours if you want to come for six hours whatever whatever the Holy Ghost leads you it's, I don't want you to hear my voice I want you to hear his voice you're not doing it for us you don't want to come that's fine you can you can actually stream it from home apostoliciron.com but there's something about collectively gathering together and uh, there will be a, a point in time when we began that there will be angels, just like right now, gathered in here to war with us at the 2016 call to war, I believe it was. Uh, while we, we, I was in the sanctuary in Antioch and there was a, a big thud. Brother Shelton looked at Brother Wright and he said, did you just hear that? Brother, Sh Brother Wright said, uh, said no. And the Lord told Brother Shelton, Michael, the archangel, just showed up to war with us. And that was his feet landing on the platform. I mean, there's people there that see the angelic being. I've never seen angels. I just feel them. I sense them. I mean, it was, I can't even describe it. Can't even describe it. But it's intense. It'll be very tiring to the flesh. That's why you should know how to pray rest in refreshing tongues when we war. Uh, he'll instruct us. Some of the prayer is going to be instructive prayer, specific areas. I've been in there where the whole place turned to the north. We pray towards the north and the south and the east and the west. And in fact, he said, wherever you're from, I want you to face that. We're going to pray. One guy, one time, one, one uh, man that God has given him the vision of, uh, of the supernatural, he said, he said, I was standing there and all of a sudden the Lord showed me a, a funnel. And one of the funnel, you know how a tornado looks is a funnel. He said there was one funnel that had the, the top was wide and uh and it, it narrowed to the bottom and the other one was like an upside down tornado where the wide part was was here and the wide part was sucking up demonic influences all around the world he could see it was like he was above the earth and he could see the these things being sucked up into it from off the earth and then the, the other it were angels being dispatched in the earth i mean it's to the flesh it sounds crazy but our God is a supernatural God. And what we see in the physical, hear in the physical, feel in the physical is nowhere near to the supernatural empowerment that God has given to his church. You're going to see a Book of Acts church, whether you're a part of it or not. Matter of fact, it's going to be even greater than the Book of Acts church. Whether you're a part of it or not is entirely up to you. But uh, from Monday through Friday, 4 to 10 p.m., we're going to war, and then we're going to see what God's going to do. I'm believing God's going to fill this church up. Amen. What other option do we have? What did Peter say when he, you know, when Jesus asked him, you're going to leave me too? What did Peter say? Where else are we going to go? What else are you going to do? Think about it. What else are you going to do? You're going to die one day. I'm going to die one day. What other options are there in life? other than to serve Him and obey His commandments. 
And when you think of the energies that are expelled in the things of this life, and, and some of it's necessary, we, we understand that. I told somebody, I think yesterday, sometimes I feel like I'm heavenly minded and no earthly good. Too heavenly minded, but earthly no good, but whatever. We're going to leave this life, this flesh one day, and we're going to put on an incorruptible body. We're going to be changed. And his word says he's going to reign on the earth for a thousand years. And he wants us to be a part of it. Whosoever will. And uh, everything we've taught, everything we've believed in, uh, it's come to a head. And the things that are going to unfold in the spiritual are also going to unfold in the natural. There are things that are going to happen in the physical realm on earth, in this nation, that are going to be so terrifying and so fearful, uh, it's, going to, it's going to shake the very foundations of this world. Uh, there will be persecution of the church. They hated him. They're going to hate us. Uh, I don't know how that's going to unfold. I don't know what restrictions they're going to try to place on us as believers. But uh, trust me when I say you're going to want to make sure you're on the Lord's side when his judgment starts to be poured out upon this earth. He has to bring fear into the souls of men in order for them to look to him. In order for them to, to realize, I need to get right with God. And uh, sometimes I've said to, to people, there really are no other options. You, you might reject what I'm telling you. You might, you might not believe you have to repent and be baptized by immersion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ or receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, evidence of speaking in other tongues. You may not believe that. That is work. That's what he he ordained. That is what he purposed. That is his word. It's going to be his way or no way. And uh, I, I said, "That's all right," but a time of reckoning is going to come. And uh, thank God that He has shown us what He has shown us. Think of how many people you know that are not walking in biblical revelation and truth the way you and I understand it here today. And. Uh, He's going to post something on Facebook. He's going to be moving in people's lives. There, there, are, there are people that love Jesus that are sincerely wanting to talk to him, wanting relationship with him. In some cases, they're more committed than some of us to their walk with what they have. He is going to reach into their lives and reveal to them who he is Give them the revelation of the Acts 2.38 message. And they're going to be part of the church. Yep. That's right. This is not us. This is not about us. <laughs> not at all. This is a worldwide operation. Praise God. So that's you consider what you want to do. There will be no church service Thursday night. We will be engaged in war. And again, it's from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, come for an hour, two hours, 30 minutes, whatever the Holy Ghost would lead you to come. But we're believing great things. Praise God. I'm in Romans chapter 10 uh, this afternoon. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Appreciate your faithfulness to the house of the Lord. And I'm glad that when you come here, you can meet Jesus. And I pray that. I pray when people come to this place, let them meet Jesus. Let them feel Jesus. Matter of fact, there's an, an anointing on this street corner right here. There's an anointing of the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. And every car that stops on mm -hmm. these street signs, whether it's Monticello Road or York Ave, every car that stops a stop sign, a bit of that anointing touches them, causes them to look at the sign, causes them to read the sign. And God gives them an opportunity to respond to what they feel. And I believe that he is going to use that to draw people into his kingdom. Yeah. Whether it's part of our kingdom, I don't really care. 
as long as it sparks something inside of them and the Holy Ghost can speak to them. Amen. I pray that part of your prayer time, one of the things that you do is you loose the spirit of the fear of the Lord. That should be a regular part of your prayer time. Loose the spirit of the fear of the Lord on your unsaved friends, families, over the nation, your workplace. Because without fear, people don't come to repentance. The Bible says uh, that uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. Wisdom. And so, let that be a, a, a normalcy of your prayer time where you loose the spirit of the fear of the Lord and loose the spirit of repentance. Amen. Praise God. Bind the spirit of iniquity. Iniquity is the self-will. Bind the spirit of that stubborn person, that stubborn loved one that just doesn't want to hear what you have to say or rejects what you have to say. I am thankful that the Holy Ghost didn't give up on me and all my years of rejecting it. Praise God. But I think we, we really need to understand that everything that we do regarding church and you know our music, and I know we have a small congregation and we don't have a, a lot of the things some of the bigger churches have, and, and quite frankly, that's a good thing. Usually when I, that's when all the trouble starts. Not that I don't want to see a lot of people saved, but usually the bigger the assembly uh, becomes, the more distant we become sometimes. Sometimes little cliques arise, and, and uh, when you have these all these different departments and stuff, there's, there's always, you know, always noise, always drama, and different things like that. But, uh, you know, His will be done, not ours. But I think what we need to understand is, is that... You know, we don't just come here to, to fill a, a couple of hours on a Sunday or, or on a Thursday. We, we, we come here to preserve the why. Everybody say the why. The why. Why are we here? Why are you here? Why are you walking with Jesus, being, being a part of his kingdom? You know, it, it, it's not about the building. It's not about the music or the programs or everything else that, that we do. In Romans 10 14, the scripture says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Romans 10 and verse 14. Let me read it again. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Mm -hmm. And the scripture says that, that um, uh, in order for them to hear something, there needs to be someone, someone that is, is echoing it out. Uh, that word preacher there means to herald or to proclaim or to publish. And, and, and a lot of times when I first... You know, heard this scripture, read this scripture. I, man, that's a pastor's job, or, or, or I'm not, I'm not licensed. You know, it's not my responsibility. But you realize that you're a preacher. That's right. If you're a child of God, you are a preacher. You are somebody that should be proclaiming. You are somebody that should be herald, heralding and publishing the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. That you, you can have your sins remitted. You can. You can have joy unspeakable and full of glory. And, and uh, we need to learn and, and we, we preserve the why. Why we do what we do. Why we live the way we live. Why, why we're, we're Bible readers and Bible believers. Why we have the Holy Ghost. Why we, why we tell people you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. And be able to go to the scripture and say, well, this is what the Bible says. This is what the scripture says. Let me show you. Praise God. There's a thing that uh, you can actually look up, and, and it's used primarily in the military. It's called the commander's intent. Brother Coltharp shared this with us yesterday in our ministerial training class. And commander's intent is an intent describing military-focused operations, and it is a, a uh, publicly stated description 
of the end state as it relates to forces. In other words, the entities of, of uh, the, the tanks and the, the military, the personnel, the people, the terrain that the uh, army is going to go into. Is it uh, rocky uh, terrain? Is it, is it sand terrain? Or, you know, exactly what it is. is, is are there hills or is it flatlands? Is it desert? The purpose of the operation is, is part of the commander's intent. And, and so the, the key tasks are given strategically for this battle and how to accomplish this battle. And so the, the ground troops, uh, the, the, the commanders, the, the, the ones that are making all the decisions, it filters down the strategy, this is what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go north, and we're going to go south, and we're going to uh, take this and go this and go that. And, and um, uh, the, the 3rd Battalion, 4th Marines, you're going you're to hit this part head on, and, and you're going to go southwest. And, and uh, the tank battalion, you're going to go east, and this is what you're going to do. And, and so... They go into the marching, into the intent of the commander's intent, and they know, know whether they lose men, whether the, some of their tanks run, run out of gas, or however and whatever. It, it's not that you never lose the vision or the understanding. The commander's intent is that we've got to take that, that hill right there. We've got, to, we've got to take out that bunker right there. That's got to be done. Just like when they hit the beach in Normandy and those pillboxes with the machine guns that were there that were dropping men like flies. They'd open the door of those, tr those uh, troop uh, boats and, and before they even hit the water, they were dead. And so the first commander's intent was you need to take out those armaments on the beach because we got a whole lot of guys. I think over 3,000 people were killed before they even advanced off the beach. And those that made it had to get their shovels out and dig in. But in everybody's mind, the echo of the commander's intent was there. And that's what you and I have to have. We have to understand we have a commander that sits upon the throne of glory. He has called you and I into the kingdom for such a time as this. And some of us might feel like we're just a private and some of us are sergeants and, and we might have lieutenants and colonels and commanders right here in the midst of us. We just don't know what, what supplies the, the commander has given to each and every one of us. But trust me when I say the commander has given you gifts and has given you uh, power and, and supernatural abilities to accomplish. His intention is to seek and to save that which is lost. And so I remember going through Marine Corps boot camp. I can relate to, to what it was like to shoot an M14 and an M16. I, I can relate to what it was like to shoot an M79 grenade launcher and, and all the training that we went through. But uh, that was, I guess, fun, you could say, and I learned a lot. And uh, when I went in, they were just they had just stopped sending troops over to Vietnam. So I never got to use that, those, uh, those, that training in experience, per se. But you see, our commander's intent, the Lord Jesus Christ, is you're left behind when you don't involve yourself. You're left, be you're left behind in the sidelines when you're not fulfilling the commander's intent to take territory and to take ground. We're going to be praying against the gates of hell. And, and, and uh, one of the visions somebody received is, is that as they were praying and saying in Jesus' name, it was He said there were there were there were angels and 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 saints that were. That it was like having this giant log, and every time they'd say in Jesus' name, remember the old days when they come it came against the fortress and the gates were there, and, and, and they would use that battering ram and boom, and they'd bang that door and bang that door, and uh, inside they had that big other beam holding the doors locked, and and all of a sudden the wood started to crack and the beam started to crack. And every time he said they would say in Jesus' name, you heard boom and boom and angels were there. That's exactly what's going to be taking place as the church around the world prays this week against the gates of hell in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Brother Wright in 1982 received a vision and God showed him the gates. And God showed them behind the bars. There were people, their faces were drawn and they were, it was kind of, they were sucked in and then they were just sad and uh, wide eyes and no, and hopeless. And, and he says, all of a sudden, as we warred and the gates blew open, thousands and thousands of people began to flow out of the gates. Their faces were lit up. They were smiling. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. And there's people in your life and there's people in my life that I know and you know that are going to be set free as we war against and fulfill the commander's intent. I want to be a part of that. Praise God. I've said to him, Brother Bobby, I want to die trying. 
If I get wounded, so be it. If I die in the process, so be it. There is no other purpose under heaven. Amen. He is our God. He is the commander. And he's calling his people, Holy Ghost filled, washed in the blood, to go forth and bombard the gates of hell. And Jesus has given us a promise that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Friend, it's a win-win situation. But if you don't lock and load and hit the ground running, you're not going to be part of the supernatural move of God that God wants to do. If that's where you want to be, that's all right. But as for me and my house, I'm going to be right smack in the middle of what he's doing. Amen. Peter said in 2 Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promises. Mm -hmm. How long have you been waiting for your promise? Do you have something that you want God to do or something you've asked God and you've been praying about it for a long time? And you're not giving up. You keep asking, God, this is what I want. God, this is what I want. God, this is what I want. Think of the promises, the years of, uh, of marching with Him that are in this house alone. Think of the church worldwide. Supernatural utterances, supernatural prophecies. I mean, it's incredible. And Peter said, listen, listen. I know somebody's made a promise to you and never fulfilled it. I know you've had people tell you, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And they never did it. They never fulfilled what they told you they were going to do. But Peter said, Jesus isn't like that. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise as some men count slackness. Oh, you know, I, I do my best. Somebody asked me, can you do something? I do my best. I've got to write it down right away. I'll forget Thank God for my notes. Thank God. I, electronics, I got. I, I even text myself. I, you got to do this. Don't forget to do this. And sometimes even then I miss it. But when I seek Him and I'm in His presence, He doesn't tell me. He doesn't ask me to do something and then just kind of yawns away. So, oh, well, maybe He'll do it. Maybe He'll don't. No, if you're a child of God, friend, He's going to keep talking to you and talking to you and talking to you and nudging you. And convincing you. Will you do this? Will you do this? You might pray for something else and they'll say, what about this? I've told you. I've been trying to get you to do this for how long now? He's not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness, but his long suffering to usward. Who's the usward? Thank God for his patience with us. Thank God. He doesn't give up. Not yet, anyway. Eventually, the time of the Gentiles is going to be fulfilled, and he's going to turn back to Israel. And none of us know when that's going to happen. And I pray, in Jesus' name, that you're where you need to be when that shift happens. Because from that point, there will be no turning back. There will be no second chances. Matter of fact, I believe the Bible says with Esau in the book of Hebrews, you know, at, at the time of his inheritance, he was, he was like some of us. Ah, what's that big deal? Well, what's, what good is this inheritance is going to do to me? I'm hungry. I want something now. i, I got to eat now. Come on, Jacob. Give me, give me some of that pottage, will you? Well, give me your inheritance and I'll give you something to eat. And because, because the importance of the inheritance was not important to Esau at the moment, He's the type of flesh. I, I just want to fulfill my flesh. I want to please my flesh. I want to uh, pamper my flesh. And because that was his attitude, the Scripture says that God hated Esau. Several places in Scripture mm -hmm. says God hated Esau. He despised Esau because of his attitude. And the Scripture says once he realized that his, his birthright had been, been passed on to his brother Jacob, the Bible says in Hebrews that he sought it with tears. Uh -huh. yep. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine being at a place where you're crying out to God and He doesn't hear you? And you're, oh God, please God, one more time God, let, let please touch me. I heard a man say one time that 
This, this one man, he, he, he kept rejecting, rejecting. He'd come into church, he'd repent, he'd cry. God, in the beginning, would, would fill him with the Holy Ghost again. And, and, and he'd go right back out there and do his sin. And then he'd, he'd come back again. And he was just in and out, in and out. And if I'm not mistaken, the guy said when all was said and done, they had to put that man in a straitjacket because of the insanity that took place because God would not touch him anymore. The game was over. We're dealing with eternity, folks. Sometimes like you, you know, I've done things and I say, how stupid can I get? The devil's slick, Brother Bobby. I mean, he'll tempt us to do stuff. He'll set the trap. <laughs> we see the trap. Well, it's just the true fall. Well, and it's not, we don't even think about sin. We don't think about God. We don't think about failure. And he, and he tempts us, you know, and he lures us in and then, boom, you do it. And immediately he starts to accuse yeah. us and condemn us. And then we say, why in the world did I fall for that? Mm -hmm. yeah. And sometimes you do it more than once. Can you say amen? amen. amen. That's, what he does. That's what he does. But you see, Jesus is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness. But he is long suffering, he is patient. That's why the ground doesn't open up and, and swallow that person that you don't like. That's why, you know, he doesn't burn people to a crisp that you'd like to see burnt to a crisp. Because even those folks he wants to save. Yes, sir. Even those folks that will do you wrong. Even those folks that, that get in your face, that, that talk about you and slander you and, and, uh, and, and say things about you that are untrue. Even those folks he wants to save. While we were yet sinners. Uh -huh. Hello. Uh -huh. Christ died for us. Scripture says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We run by people every day. We, we move by people every day. And the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Can you imagine, and I don't know if this, how this is going to happen, but can you imagine standing at the white throne judgment and somebody you knew on a regular basis or somebody you rubbed shoulders with on a regular basis is standing there and God pronounces judgment upon them to separate him from them for all of eternity and they turn around and look you in the face and say, why didn't you tell me? Why did you give up on me? I know I rejected you. I know I called you names. I talked about you behind my, behind my back. I remember, remember one guy at work I, I wouldn't give up on him. We'd be inside the, these trailer trucks and moving the equipment and putting stuff inside there. I'd be witnessing to him and the Holy Ghost was all over him. He, he go, he, he, he's leaning up against the wall of the inside of a trailer track, tractor trailer and the tears are, are flowing down his eyes and he said, Kevin, what is going on here? I said, Larry, that's the Holy Ghost that's trying to get your attention. But he never gave in, never gave in. And I'd walk by in the summertime, if his car windows were open, I'd throw a track on the, on the driver's seat. He had them all piled up in his, uh, in his, uh, on the dashboard. And eventually, he actually told me, when I got home, I used to throw them away. Didn't want anything to do with God. But we kept praying. We kept witnessing to him. Even though he rejected every now and then. I, I'm not saying you have to get in their, their face, but maybe you do have to get in their face. I mean, this is hell we're talking about. When you leave this place, you go home, turn your stove on and put your hand over the fire and keep it there until you smell your flesh burning. That isn't even going to come near what hell's going to be like. So please, please don't say, oh, well, I've got to be careful what I say. Or I can't, ah, oh, man, you know, political correctness. I might lose my job. Oh, I, I can't talk about Jesus and all this other hubbub that we come up with. We're talking about hell. Amen. That's right. But he got sick. And a fever began to come upon him. And at 11 o'clock at night, my phone rang, and it was his wife. Now, Kevin, this is this is so and so. Can Larry wants to know if you'll pray for him? He's he's in bed. He's real sick. 
I said, yeah, sure. I, I will. I'll, I'll pray for him. All right. Thanks for calling. I hung up and the Holy Ghost said, Duh. Call your pastor. Go out there and pray for him. So I called my pastor. I said, hey, brother, I tried to witness him to at work, man. He's, he's sick. He just called me. He wants prayer. He said, let's go. She took us upstairs and he was in bed, dripping sweat, dripping, pouring off him. He's just laying in bed, feeling miserable. And she stood in the corner there and, and pastor began to talk to him. He's standing at his bed and, and uh, had some oil with him and explained to him what we're going to do. We're going to lay hands on you. We're going to pray for you. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, I... He took the oil, he put it on Larry's head, and I put my hand on, on, on where his leg was, and we prayed, and it was like, it was like an electric shock, shot through that bed, shot through his body. He began to shake, it was like, he sat up in bed, he goes, Linda, I'm healed, I'm healed. Matter of fact, the power of God got so intense in that bedroom, she went flying against the wall, boom. Because they had never experienced a supernatural touch from a real God. And that is exactly what God wants to do with you and what God wants to do with me. He wants to manifest Himself to our world, to my world, to your world. Whether you're on the job, whether you're at home, whether you're with family, with friends, or enemies. He wants to manifest Himself just like He did when He walked the face of the earth. Look at Romans chapter 3 with me, verse 10 through 18. Romans chapter 3, verse 10 through 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that uh, doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. And there is no fear of God before their eyes. I'm talking about preserving the why. This is why we do what we do. This is why we have assemblies together. This is why we fellowship with one another. This is why we, when we're together, the, the word goes forth and, and God speaks to us and he encourages us and he strengthens us. That's why we pray. That's why we fast. That's why we read the scripture. Because we're surrounded. I don't know about you, but I'm surrounded by people in these verses. How about you? I've got family. In these verses, how about you? Jesus. Don't let the don't let the why slip by and turn into programs or turn into some religious tradition that you've been holding on to for years and years. Don't let the why slip by and the word slip out from the interest of the word that you've hid in your heart be, become dormant inside. If you have a calling on your life. The Bible says, let, let, let your calling, make your calling, let your calling and election be sure. Confirm it in the Holy Ghost. Confirm it in God. What do you want me to do, God? Because God has called some of you and is calling some of you to step into a dimension that you're not familiar with. And we make all these excuses on how come we can and my schedule and my life and this and that. He knows, he knows, he knows what your schedule is. He knows what your life is about. But you're surrounded with people that do not know and have not the fear of God. It's actually something called the curse of knowledge. <coughs> you can find it online if you Google it, the curse of knowledge. is a cognitive bias that occurs when an individual communicating with other individuals unknowingly assumes that the others have the background to understand. This bias is also called by some authors the curse of expertise. You know, you've been in this a little bit. You, you kind of know the lingo. Hey, praise the Lord, Brother Bobby. Hey, praise the Lord, brother. Hey, sister, praise the Lord. You kind of get to know the lingo. You know the, 
tricks of the trade, so to speak. And we think that when we meet people that do not know God, that, that we've got to be on our game and make sure we get out the lingo is right and the, the word is right and all this other stuff is right. Man, we want to be the spitting image of expertise and perfection when it comes for being a witness for Jesus. Really? Really? I think he used a donkey one time to get his point across. Yep. Just let the love of God be shed abroad in your heart. That's right. Mm -hmm. Just tell them Jesus is Jesus is the answer you're looking for right now. Mm -hmm. Tell them tell them what hope you can bring. Tell them your testimony. I, I shared it with you. You can just tell somebody your testimony and the Holy Ghost can touch them, overshadow them, and minister to them. Jesus. You don't have to quote a chapter and verse. And, and, and a lot of times they're clueless. <laughs> Brother Coltrop, and, and I can relate to this, he says yesterday, he said, here's a, here's the name of his church is First Apostolic Church. And he says, you'd be amazed. People in my town, they don't even know how to say apostolic. And I've had call phone, I had phone calls, you know, and is this Apollo Washington? Is this Apollo Sue talking? Apostolic. This is Apostolic Temple. But we assume because we have the curse of knowledge that everybody understands our lingo and everybody understands what we do and why we do it. Jesus was the light of the world, friend. All he did was walk in darkness and he lit the place up. Do people know you're a believer? Do they know you're a believer by your lingo? Or do you know do they know you're a believer by your life? In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 through 6, it says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. He has shined in your heart to give you knowledge and understanding. Don't, don't box it into this tradition or this this thing that you think you've got to maintain. Just let the light of God... just. Oh, man, I'm convinced that he knows issues in our culture, just like he knew uh, issues in the first century culture, and, and they're different. He doesn't do things the same way. I came, believe me, this generation is a whole lot different than the generation that I came into the church in 1982. Trust me when I say that. And maybe you can say, amen, it's a whole lot different. So I can't use 1982's methods. I've got to use the current method. And Jesus knows the thoughts and the intents of the heart that that person that you rub shoulders with every single day, that person you come in contact with every single day, Jesus knows what they need to hear. And I need to be praying. And you need to be praying. God, give me the, give me the gift of the word of knowledge. Give me the a word of knowledge for that person I'm going to see tomorrow. Give me a word of knowledge for that customer. Give me a word of knowledge for that worker. Give me a word of knowledge for my boss or, or whatever. And when you seek his kingdom, he said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Matter of fact, he even says in Luke 18, when that woman went before that unjust judge and she wouldn't back off, and the Bible, the description of, of her coming before him every single day, avenge me on my adversary, avenge me on my... The, the wording there literally means in the Greek, it was like her punching him in the face, buffeting him. Avenge me on my adversary, avenge me on my adversary. You know what Jesus said to that? Hey, when the Son of Man comes, is he going to find that kind of faith? Do you just take no for an answer and move on down the road? Or is there a tenacity, a Holy Ghost tenacity inside of you that says, I'm not giving up on that soul. They may not want to hear me, but I'm going to pray and God might, I'm going to pray, God, give me, give me a spirit of travailing prayer. Give me a spirit of intercessory prayer for that person. I want to see them saved. And you bind the devil's powers. 
You, you, you curse the darkness that Satan has put on blinded there. You loose their ears so that they hear. You loose their hearts so that they can perceive. And you pray. And you pray in the Holy Ghost, warring against the gates of hell that have them as a captive. You see, John 1, 4 and 5 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. They'll know you're different. You won't even have to. You get, you get enough Jesus on you, Sister Doty. They won't even ask you what you believe. They'll feel what you believe. That's right. They'll sense what you believe. Lord, absolutely. That's true. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. I've had people say, well, what is it? What is it about you? I don't know. What, what is it about mm -hmm. you? I said, I got the Holy Ghost yep. down on the inside. Yep. Oh, man, he said, I don't, I wish I could be like you. I, 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 you can, you can be like me. You can have the same thing I have. I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You know, when I got the Holy Ghost, I spoke in another language I had never learned before. <gasps> really? Yeah, just like the Bible says. The Bible actually says that's a promise from God for me, for you, for everybody. Yeah. Really? Or oh, oh, these easy believe people that have a relationship with God. They have an element of a relationship with God. And, 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 they, and you, you run into them. Hey, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. You're a believer. Yeah, I'm a believer. Until what were you baptized? Huh? Yeah. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? I didn't know whether there'd be any Holy Ghost. Well, do you know? But, and you kind of wet their whistle. You don't have the Holy Ghost? According to the Scripture? <sighs> Wait till you experience the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It'll curl your toes. What a time you got. And you kind of wet their whistle on you. And, and then the Bible says, when, when you're done with them and you find yourself in the presence of the Lord, the Scripture says, oh... Lord Jesus, your word says, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And you get on your face before God. Oh, God, save them. Oh, God, in Jesus' name. And you start interceding. You stand in the gap. I put something on Facebook this morning. God is calling his church to stand in the gap between the souls of humanity and an eternity in hell. Who's going to answer that call? Who in here is going to answer that call? Who in the, that person? Person you know, that neighbor you know, that you run into in the halls or on the job or when you're shopping, uh, whatever. Oh, are you going to stand in the gap and you're going to pray, oh God, I don't want them to go to hell. Oh God, help me, Jesus. Oh, give me a door of opportunity. Give me the boldness, Father, to allow you to speak through me. Give me a word. Stand with me if you would. Give me a word that I can use, Father, just like you did with the woman of Samaria. I believe that is going to be a manifestation of the Holy Ghost that we're going to see prominent more and and more and more where God is going to speak into our lives situations that people are dealing with that there was no clue that we could ever know it but we as people of God are going to speak it to them and they're going to eyes are going to go what how did you know that? The Holy Ghost told me. Jesus told me. And Jesus loves you. And Jesus wants to touch your life. Jesus wants to give you hope. And then you go to pray. Oh Lord in Jesus name. I command their minds to be open. I command their hearts to be open. I bind the influences of darkness. I pray in Jesus name. Loose them. Transfer them from the power of darkness. Into the power of the light of Jesus Christ. And we war. And we pray. And we just keep on keeping on. And we don't don't care whether they come to God or not because God is the one that gives the increase. He just called us to be laborers. He doesn't care about our results. He cares about our labor. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Preserving the why. Matthew 10, 7. But as you go, preach, saying, kingdom of God is at hand. Read the 10th chapter of Matthew. All 42 verses of it. And ask yourself, am I really part of the church? Am I really taking what Jesus commanded his disciples and his disciples commanded us? 
Am I really doing? Am I, am I really a part of his body in the earth? I tell you what, Sister Sue, you read chapter 10 of Matthew, it's convicting. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils. Freely you've received, freely give. If you go to witness to somebody they rejected, shake the dust off your feet and keep on going down the road. Man, we are so, it's so foreign to us. So foreign to us. I don't want to lose the reason why. He came to seek and to save that which is lost. And he's moving in his body to do exactly the same thing. Praise God. Would you lift your hands towards heaven for a moment here today? Would you let the word get grounded and rooted in your heart in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? I stand on your word, Jesus. You said, you said that your word would not return void. You said your word would go forth and not return void, Father. And I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that your word would find a place in our heart. The transferring power of your spirit, my God, would germinate that word. Give us words of prophecy. Give us words of victory, words of healing, words of hope, words of salvation to speak to those that we come in contact with, Father, in these last of the last days. Raise up an army, Jesus, an apostolic temple, a place where people can come and find beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Move upon them, Lord Jesus. Plant trees of righteousness through us, my God, as your body and your people on the earth. I lose the spirit of the Holy Ghost, Father, to fall upon each and every one. And I ask, oh God, that you would accomplish your will, your purpose. Oh God, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Help us, Lord Jesus, to crucify our own wills and to do your will, my Lord Jesus. I pray in your name. I lose the authority of the Holy Ghost and the mind of Christ upon your people here to believe what they have, to believe their calling, to believe their authority, to believe your promise for them, Jesus. The kingdoms of heaven, the gates of hell, they're not going to prevail against us, Lord Jesus. Lead the way as our commander. Lead the way as the officer and finisher of our faith. Baptize us with a fire, my God of heaven, that sees the way you see, hears the way you hear, responds the way you responded, my God, even if it causes us discomfort, even if it works our world upside down, my God. I pray, Jesus, no weapon formed against us will prosper here today. In Jesus' name, let your word be alive. Let your word go forth and accomplish your will. Prove, my God, to your people that they that be for us are more than they that be against us. In Jesus' name. Come on, come on. In Jesus' name. Take it, my God. Write it on our inward parts. Write your law on our inward parts. We want to be the people of God. We want to be the body of Christ. I lose the spirit of impartation in this house. I lose the spirit of prayer. I lose the spirit of compassion. I lose the spirit of travailing prayer and intercessory prayer. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is so. Let it be so. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, yes. In Jesus' name, yes. In the name of the Lord Jesus. It is not by might nor by power, Father. It is by your Spirit. 